Hey everyone, Tom at Snake River Base again. Wanted to talk a little bit about some questions that we got coming in via our website in response to this video series. Somebody wanted to know about routing the bridle for handheld and leaving the pin cover flap open or closed. I want to grab a couple of rigs and show you a couple of variations, ways that you can route the bridle for handheld, and also some thoughts about leaving the pin cover flap open or closed. So back in a minute with some rigs. All right, I got a couple of rigs here. Uh, I want to talk about some thoughts on routing the bridle for handheld with any rig, and then I want to talk about some specifics for different types of rigs. I'm not going to talk about a specific rig, but just general types. So first thing that you should do when you're routing for handheld is always make sure that you take the bridle out of the channel and get it away from the bottom corner. This bottom right corner creates a snag hazard, and if you leave the bridle in the channel, you can snag the bridle here, especially if you deploy in a head high position on a short delay, and that's pretty common on a handheld jump. So make sure the bridle is clear of the channel. Then we're going to route the bridle for handheld. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Usually, an easy way is just to bring the bridle up here, tuck it there, to get it away from this dangerous bottom corner when you pull the pilot sheet out. It's going to come up over your shoulder. The whole objective of this rerouting is to get away from that corner. That's it. Then we have the question of what we do with the bridle in here. The most common thing to do is just leave it in the normal orientation as if you were going stowed. There are a couple of other options though, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Then, this was the primary question we had on this video series, what do we do with this flap? We have some options for the flap. The first one is just leave it hanging like this. The second one is close it again over the top. The third one is close it over the top but with the bridle on the outside of it like this, so I can put the bridle inside or outside the channel. And the last one is, open the pin cover flap out of the way in some way. Some rigs allow you to do this and some rigs do not. Tuck it back away from itself. Okay, so open, closed, open and tucked out of the way, closed with the bridle in the channel, closed with the bridle out of the channel. I know there's a lot of options here. I wanna talk about what I think will work best and then I wanna talk about pros and cons. The good news first is, I don't think that this is going to make a huge difference on your jump. Most of the things you do, as long as you're clear of this bottom snag hazard, are going to be just fine. So let's pull this, this rig out of the way and talk about this style of rig. This is what we call a crossover tuck flap. You can see that the pin cover flap on this rig crosses over into a pocket on the other side of the container. In general, on a crossover rig, and this is things like the Morpheus Gargoyle, Morpheus Helium, uh, Apex Summit, I don't know if there's more. On a crossover rig, in general, this flap represents very little snag hazard. It's usually pretty loose and slack, and it's usually not gonna create much hazard of the bridle locking up on it. So personally, if I'm jumping a crossover on a delay with you know half a second of delay, any real delay, I'm happy to just close the flap again, bridle in or out, okay? If I'm doing a legitimate go and throw, we're taking no delay at all, I will usually tuck the flap back out of the way, but honestly, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference in the deployment. And the reason for that is that the real snag hazard here is this bottom corner of the tuck pocket. What can happen, and it's extremely uncommon, is that the eye of the pin can get pulled into this corner and cause it to jam as it's trying to extract. This doesn't happen very often. Uh, if you want to see some good video of it, surf over to watchthybridle.com and you can see Thomas Hirsch locking up a ton of rigs in this configuration. So it does happen, not super common. Honestly, if I'm doing a legitimate go and throw and I'm handheld, I'm not that worried about it because I'll probably be pretty head high at deployment. Okay, This will usually happen in a head down position. So there you go. On the crossover, if it's super low legitimate go and throw, tuck it back out of the way. Otherwise, personally, not super worried about it. I'll usually just close it, okay? Let's talk about the other style of rig. The other major style of rig that we see has a pin cover flap that I like to think of as a wrap around. Instead of crossing over into the other side, it wraps back around into itself. On this style of rig, I generally prefer to route the bridle Again, away from that dangerous bottom corner, up and tuck, or whatever you're using, Velcro magnets, doesn't matter. 
And then I like to take this and fold it back out of the way. I love this feature of this particular wraparound rig. This is a Perigee Pro from Asylum Designs because this flap folds back out of the way and becomes completely clear. In my opinion, this is the configuration which is most resistant to some kind of pin lock being created between the bridle, the pin, and the binding tapes. I really like this configuration for super low handheld jumps. And on this style of rig, the wraparound, I'll almost always open the pin cover flap because I think it can create hesitations if it's locked hard shut. Uh, that's particularly true if you have a lot of stiffener in here, but I think it's true on any rig. So fold it back out of the way as best you can and create a totally clear path of travel. I think that this is the most malfunction resistant configuration on any two pin rig for a short delay handheld jump.